Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand, Forex Gold and S&P fundamental technical analysis for the week ahead, starting the 15th of September. I hope you all had a great trading week. And uh, before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, the video content with your trading colleagues and across your social media platforms if you uh, like the content that I provide and it's a free way to kind of support the channel and get the information out to those that may benefit from it. So um, yeah, let's get into uh, the week ahead and what's coming up and so it's an important week for the G10 central bank policy updates. Uh, the Fed is expected to begin their rate cutting cycle after the pickup in employment and core inflation in August. The Fed is expected to begin their easing cycle with a 25 rate cut, although a larger 50 basis points cut can't be completely ruled out if they take a more forward-looking risk management approach to setting policy to guard against the risk of a sharper slowdown in the US labour market. Also, the Bank of England will uh, is expected to leave rates on hold in the week ahead after the finely balanced decision to begin cutting rates last month. Economic growth, wages and services inflation have been weaker recently, strengthening the case of further rate cuts, although we expect the Bank of England to wait until the following policy meeting in November to cut rates for a second time. And finally, the Bank of Japan will be the last major central bank to hold their policy meeting next week. We expect the Bank of Japan to leave rates on hold after raising rates for the second time at their last uh, policy meeting in July. So uh, lots going on in terms of uh, central bank meetings. And so uh, maybe some uh, looks like there's going to be some market moving news this week. So starting off on the US dollar and uh, looking at the US dollar equally weighted index, and this is a different index. Um, it's not the uh, DXY or the USDX. And if you want to uh, know how to plot uh, this uh, the equally weighted dollar index on your trading view charts and why I use the equally weighted uh, dollar index then I will leave a um, a link on the top right hand side of the screen so um, yeah with the dollar uh, dollar index um, the dollar at the moment is in a bit of a, a bit of an auction a bit of a range right so we're seeing uh, yearly lows first of all right so 2024 low 2023 lows We've come back down here and really it's based on the interest rate expectations, right? Interest rate cut expectations. And so when we go to, when we're looking at the uh, the data, um, we can see that the, uh, the underlying US inflation unexpectedly picked up in August uh, on higher prices for housing and travel, undercutting the chances of an outsized Fed uh, Federal Reserve interest rate cut next week. Uh, while interest, um, sorry, while Wednesday's reading won't deter the Fed from cutting rates next week, it reduces the chance of an outsized reduction. Now that actually slightly changed on the Friday. So um, when we look at the Fed Watch tool, what was happening was. Uh, this week or about a week ago, we had a 70% chance of a 25 basis point cut and a 30% chance of a um, of a 20 of a 50 basis point cut, right? And it it was actually a month ago, it was around 75% um, 25. But uh, yesterday, well, say yesterday, but on 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 um, uh, on Friday, uh, we had uh, an increase in. Um, the probability of a 50 basis point cut, which actually weakened the dollar. It was like the last maybe um, uh, cut a few hours, I guess, maybe uh, five, six hours of the day. And um, uh, that was, I think, driven by, um, it says a, a Wall Street Journal article that was talking about the uh, Fed may be worried or concerned about uh, maybe a soft or a hard landing in the economy. So uh, the market uh, suddenly kind of put, um, uh, the tw either 25 or 50 basis point cut at about 50-50 now. So um, 
that's why you saw the uh, the uh, the dollar um, kind of sell off in the last uh, trading hours on of the week. So um, you know, going back to the charts, I do think the dollar is um, more of a sell than a buy. Uh, if any pullbacks, if we can get some, I think are definitely selling opportunities. Or if prices make lower lows and then pull back to a uh, to a level, then I think that is actually. Uh, decent for a, uh, a short trade. Um, uh, there's no real real reason to kind of buy um, the uh, the dollar actually outside of possibly Donald Trump potentially uh, winning uh, the election. Uh, the markets see Donald Trump uh, winning the election as a dollar positive, and the dollar may appreciate based on that. But just based on monetary policy, um, I would expect the dollar to continue to probably grind a bit lower, although um, I would say uh, any pullbacks to levels would be really the opportunity to kind of short the dollar. I mean, there are opportunities also to buy the dollar, right? So you can look for buys here, but my bias and I think the path of least resistance is still to the downside. Also as well, um, it's important to understand risk sentiment. Um, so Russia sharing nuclear secrets with Iran fuels US-UK worries. So Moscow shares classified tech in exchange for Iranian missiles and um, doubts remain even as Tehran says it seeks no nuclear arms. So the US and UK are increasingly concerned that Russia is sharing with Iran secret inf uh, information and technology that could bring it closer to being able to build nuclear weapons in exchange for Tehran providing Moscow and ballistic missiles for its war in Ukraine. So um, definitely risk sentiment is uh, ramping up. And uh, something to keep an eye on is the VIX um, volatility index and uh, anything above 20 is considered uh, more risk off and the higher uh, the VIX goes, the more intense the risk off sentiment. And at the moment we are at about 17. So if we start to see next week, uh, the market starts to be a bit concerned about risk off, um, you know, the Russia-Ukraine uh, war intensifying. Um, then, uh, of course, you know, you want to uh, look towards risk, uh, risk off assets. So in that, in that, and they should really appreciate uh, the dollar. Actually, that would uh, help the dollar as well to uh, to appreciate <clears throat> as the dollar is seen as a bit of a risk um, off uh, asset. So uh, I did say that there was uh, there wasn't any reason to, to, to buy the dollar, but there actually is in terms of uh, risk sentiment. Um, and as well as um, Donald Trump, um, you know, potentially coming into the White House. So, <clears throat> um, but again, like I said, my path of least resistance is, is to the downside for now, um, especially if they uh, cut by 50 basis points, the market would definitely have to reprice the, um, the, uh, the dollar lower. Looking at the dollar yen and the dollar yen again just keeps making new lows and again this is a combination really of uh, the fed uh, cutting rates and the uh, bank of japan looking to high rates and so when we go to uh, japan uh, we look at the fed watches uh, sorry the boj watches bank of japan watches indicated that there's uh, still a long way for Japan's currency to strengthen before it would deter authorities from lifting borrowing costs. The yen would have to strengthen to around 125 per dollar to make it hard for the BOJ to continue raising rates according to the median view of analysts. So ultimately, um, the analysts, the BOJ watchers are saying essentially that we would need to see the yen fall at least uh or the dollar yen uh, uh fall to at least one two five so that's around uh one thousand five hundred pips in order for them to not want to uh hike rates anymore right so they're basically saying in a roundabout way they're going to continue hiking so um so yeah so for me uh again i think uh, that the path of these resistance again is still to the downside. So any pullbacks, a deeper pullback would be obviously better. Um, 
But if you do want to get involved at the 144s, uh, that may be okay for you. Um, but I'm really waiting for a deeper pullback if we can get one before going uh, before going short. So uh, the dollar yen is, uh, I've got more of a sell bias on that. The uh, dollar Swiss, not really a pair I'm interested in, not on my radar. But if you do want to look for uh, long trades and buy the dollar against the Swiss franc, uh, then you're looking for a bit more of a pullback before going long. If you're looking for sell trades, meaning that you think the Swiss franc will appreciate against the dollar, I do think that you probably might want to look for a bit more of a bigger pullback in order to get uh, um, short or if prices do make lower lows then a pullback up into a supply zone before uh, looking at going short but both central banks really are looking to um, to cut rates and so um, it's really a harder trade to kind of, kind of determine uh, overall direction. And I guess you could play both sides and attempt to play both sides and look to buy and sell, you know, buy at lows, sell at highs. But ultimately, um, it's uh, that's not really a, a pair I would look to trade. Um, the dollar CAD, dollar CAD, we do have... Um, uh, price to come up to actually into a nice uh, technical level um, in terms of uh, supply but ultimately um, again this pair fundamentally is not really something I'm interested in uh, technically it is really nice both currencies at the moment and both central banks are looking to cut rates um, the uh, the Canadian dollar is suffering quite a bit, especially from low commodity prices oil um, you know selling off over the past couple of weeks um, so in terms of um, you know trading direction, if you are looking and you think that the Canadian dollar should strengthen against the US dollar, then you're looking at a sell trade here. If you're thinking that the US uh, dollar should strengthen against the uh, the Canadian dollar, then you're looking at um, you know some sort of buy trade in and around uh, that area there. So yeah, you're zooming out a bit. Yeah, you would look for a uh, buy trade around the 135, 135.50s. Uh, the pound dollar. Now, the pound dollar is um, is a pair that I would be, uh, I am bullish on, I'm more bullish on. And uh, I was saying last week that I was really waiting for a um, a bit more of a, uh, a move to the upside. Now, we have reacted off of this level of uh, resistance now turned support. So now it's created some demand right here. So, um now I'm looking for a pullback into this level before looking at going long. And uh, with the uh, with the UK, uh, there is a bit of caution because it says here that the Bank of England's cautious approach to cutting interest rates will give way to rapid uh, a rapid run of interest rate cuts starting in November. So for now, I think in the short term, you should the the uh, the pound should hold up okay because they're not cutting rates. Um, uh, well, they're not expected to cut rates. Um, like you know the uh, European Central Bank have and the um, the Federal Reserve have as well as other central banks right so um, the Bank of England are holding for longer um, which should support the uh, the uh, any kind of downside or de depreciation for the uh, for the pound but they're saying that obviously from November actually then the cuts could speed up a little bit. Uh, it says here, we now expect the Bank of England to move to consecutive cuts starting at the November MPC Monetary Policy Committee meeting. We have left the terminal rates unchanged at 3% below market pricing, says Savenjari Sten, uh, an economist at Goldman Sachs in London. Sten say, uh, says this new baseline expectation has a 40% probability attached to it. So, um you know, there's, uh, there's, it's got some decent legs to the, uh, to the analysis. So, economists have had a forty percent chance to the updated baseline expectations, a thirty percent chance to the quarterly cuts, and a twenty percent chance to deeper cuts, um, deeper cutting cycle with fifty basis point increments. So, it's unlikely that they're going to really be cutting um, uh, deep um, from from November, but in terms of cutting from um, uh, uh, November then uh, that's something that is definitely a rising uh, probability. So uh, with that being said, 
the uh, the pound for me is in a better position currently uh, with the current data than the um, than the US dollar. So now the market has proved that there is demand at this 130 round number. Any pullbacks into that area for me, uh, would I would look for a uh, buy trade. Of course, if I see an entry, right, just because I'm looking for something doesn't mean I'm going to definitely take it. I need to see, um, you know, a trade set up in and around this area for me to uh, get involved in <clears throat> in that trade. And also as well, if you do want to, um, you know, uh, take your trading to get to the next level and apply fundamental analysis, uh, you know, and a really expert level to your uh, technical analysis. I know a lot of people have been wondering, when is the enrollment open? When can I join the Discord group? Um, I've been asked for a few months. And uh, enrollment will open on the 30th of September. And so... Um, yeah, you can uh, you can look to join then, and uh, I also have a video on um, on YouTube. I released it on I think it was Friday, and um, it's really kind of a um, the first hour of, uh, of of two hours of um, the members group call that we have pretty much on the midweek, either a Wednesday or a Thursday, and it goes into really kind of detailed analysis. And so, if you really enjoy that analysis. You get that analysis plus a lot more, um, you know, uh, members only videos, um, you know, access when you join as well as, you know, all the strategies and really kind of high level fundamentals that should put your um, you on the right path when it comes to understanding what institutions are looking at um, and how they're positioning over the medium to long term. So the 30th of September uh, is when I open um, the doors again. And it will be for a limited time. It won't be forever. Um, I don't like to um, just have everyone come in um, randomly at different times. It's best if I can kind of uh, have people come in at a certain period of time and then kind of close it and kind of focus on uh, those uh, members. So it will be only open for a limited time. So, uh, yeah, 30th of September, uh, you can join if you w uh, wish to. So getting back to the analysis, um, so pound dollar uh, for me is a um, is a buy. I think the path of least resistance is still to the upside. Pound uh, yen, so pound yen, again, not really on my list. I think the yen should really be the buy anyway, um, and it has been, but the, um, uh, the pound... Although it's been on the uh, stronger side, uh, of course, the Bank of England is still expected to cut rates. So um, if you're looking for any kind of sell trades to buy the yen against the pound, then you're looking at a pullback to uh, these types of supply zones. Um, again, not really a pair that I'm uh, too interested in. There are definitely better pairs to uh, trade against uh, the yen or buy the yen against the pound isn't one of those. And so, um, but if you are looking for a trade on this, either way to the upside or to the downside, you can look for these demand or supply zones. Uh, Euro dollar, interesting one, right? So Euro dollar um, has come down to actually a really nice level. There was a rate cut this week, right? So we did have a rate cut, but the rate cut had already been priced in practically. So um, it was really all about what the European Central Bank were going to say about future guidance. Now, um, future guidance um, is is uh, the market is always forward looking. And so it looks to price in future events. And then when those future events become present, the money's already made, right? So that's why, you know, there's a, the, the, uh, the saying, buy the rumor, sell the fact. Um, but with the uh, with the ECB, it was more about, OK, what are they going to say after we know they're going to cut, you know, on, on Thursday? Uh, what are they going to say after that in terms of are they going to be cutting more? And so the um, European Central Bank was actually a, a bit less dovish, a bit more hawkish um, as they weren't clear on whether they were going to um, uh, cut rates in October. So, um when we go to the eurozone, it says here the European Central Bank must continue to lower borrowing costs, though the pace of such moves will depend will um, 
dependent, okay, will be dependent on um, incoming data according to Governor Council, Governing Council member, um, Mr. Simkus. So um, they're looking to, the market is expecting them to actually cut every quarter, so less, uh, less cuts coming from the ECB. So they might skip October and then cut in November. And it says here, clues on when the ECB uh, will cut next uh, are in, were in short supply on Thursday with President Christine Lagarde avoiding to committing to a monetary policy path. Mo money markets now put the chances of an October step at 20%, down from around 40% earlier in the week. People familiar with the situation said the door isn't fully closed, but is unlikely. So, you know, you're in a situation where um, the Federal Reserve are actually expected to cut in October um, or is it November? Well, they're looking at free cuts this year um, for the rest of the year, and maybe and the uh, the euro and the European Central Bank are actually looking at two cuts, right? So less cuts, and so that should support the euro more than the um, uh, the, the the dollar, right? So for me, any pullbacks. Um, should really be buying opportunities. Now, I'm not saying it's going to reverse exactly at this point. It could come a bit lower. But ultimately, if the data is to be believed, and that is, and I say believed, but if if it is um, to kind of remain as is, where the data convinces the market that the European Central Bank are cutting less than the Federal Reserve, then uh, really you should see prices move to the upside, right? That should really be what happens. Of course, there are uh, things that will strengthen the uh, the dollar, for example, risk off sentiment because strengthen the dollar as well as a Donald Trump um, uh, win. But ultimately, I do think that if I was looking to buy or sell either of the currencies, the euro still edges it. So any pullbacks down into um, a nice uh, demand zone, I think is going to be very nice for a buy trade. Euro yen, again, with the uh, euro still cutting rates, the Bank of Japan uh, still uh, looking to hike rates, the only central bank really uh, that are looking to um, uh, do anything with rates in terms of hiking. Uh, you're really looking for pullbacks. The path of these resistance should be to the uh, to the downside still. So any pullbacks into levels of supply should uh, be the play. Euro pound a bit on even footing. So um, uh, especially uh, well, it depends on what happens, of course, on um, uh, this week. Uh, this week we should have what is it? Is it Wednesday? It's going to be the 19th, yeah. So 19th is really when we're going to get the Bank of England decision. And then from there, we can kind of determine whether, you know, you want to get long or short. Now, for me, I would look for more short plays because um, I think that the uh, if they start cutting in November. Um, I think they are uh, actually... Uh, they're probably maybe a bit more even now because if the European Central Bank do skip October, then in fact maybe what we would see is uh, more of a more of an auctioning market, right? We could see something like that. But ultimately, um, a pair that I guess if if I think one has the edge over the other, it would be the British pound over the euro. So uh, I would probably more look for short trades. Although this isn't really a pair that I would be definitely interested in. It's not really on my. Um, my list of of of, of uh, pairs to really kind of trade um the australian dollar us dollar i would look for more buy trades on this pair i think the australian dollar is a buy again one of the uh, central banks that are holding rates this year and looking to potentially cut either in december at the earliest or into february uh, 2025 so because the Australian dollar um, are holding rates that should support them now, again, in the risk off environment. And if we do see the VIX start to rise, then that automatically will um, uh, cause the dollar to likely strengthen over the Australian dollar, right? Uh, but I think once the dust clears, as it usually does when it comes to risk of sentiment, then you're looking at more, a lot more upside um, in terms of valuation. So we could see prices move to the downside. Um, but ultimately, I do think that the uh, the Australian dollar should be the uh, the buy. Also, as well, kind of weighing slightly against the Australian dollar is China's economic growth. So um, not great for the uh, 
for the um, Australian dollar at the moment. But in terms of monetary policy, the Australian dollar really should be the one to uh, to buy. Uh, out of the two, uh, gold making uh, new highs, breaking out to new highs. And again, that was really kind of due to the um, the expectation of uh, changing expectation of 50 basis point cuts. Right. So um, once the market started to kind of price in 50 basis point cuts, um, then we got a situation where uh, or the potential for 50 basis point cuts, of course, because no one knows for sure. Um, then we started moving to the upside. So um, there's no technical level, no supply zone that's going to stand in the way of the uh, fundamentals. Um, so really, this is where we are, right? New highs. So if you want to get involved in gold, a pullback into a nice demand zone is going to be the first area to look for a buy trade. And obviously as well, gold is benefiting from a bit of risk off sentiment. Um, so it's all systems go for gold in terms of the uh, the continued trend to the upside. Uh, the S&P uh, bounced this week. So uh, last week, Friday, we saw this sell off. Um, and then we had this really nice bounce uh, from a level of uh, support um, that I'd marked out. Um, so, yeah, this is basically what had happened. And now just looking really, I think, again, the path of least resistance should be more to the upside. Um, but there is a nuance to this. I would say if um, if the U.S., um, has more of a softer landing on their economy, then I think, yes, we should look towards more upside. Um, we get a deeper pullback potentially if um, there is a recession, a uh, closer, um, you know, and maybe a deeper recession, then the market may worry about that. And, um, and then we could get maybe a bigger sell-off. But ultimately, uh, for now, I think the path of these resistance is to the upside. So I think any pullbacks into uh, this demand zone should be uh, more of a buy uh, so my bias is still to the to the upside so that pretty much brings us to the end of the weekly analysis now getting into um section trade updates so looking at the trade updates and you can look at you know the previous week's um uh, analysis right and uh you know the entries and things like that but um Pretty much just giving you an update now. I'm actually out of this trade. So uh, the entry was up at these highs. Um, my target was, original target was um, at the at this area here, the 80% area. But on late on the Friday, um, I figured that it was probably just worth taking profits in and around here. We actually had a bit of a reversal um a technical reversal sign around here. So um pretty much, you know, you can't go broke taking profits is the, is the saying. And so for the sake of maybe something like, you know, 50 pips or so, um, you know, I was comfortable with taking prices and taking profits, uh, the rest of my profits around here. So that was uh, a really nice trade on the CAD uh, yen, on the Swiss yen. Again, fundamentally, the um, the, the yen, Bank of Japan are uh, uh, hiking rates, Swiss francs, Swiss National Bank are cutting rates. Um, I did reach targets around here and it continued going forward, right? So continue uh, devaluing. So that was a nice trade. I did think to myself if I should kind of hold on. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd just take some profits anyway. Really nice trade. I can wait for a pullback, right? It's not a, not a big deal. Just wait for a pullback uh, to come on that. So that was a really nice trade. This was, again, a stop hunt where we had a level, level, level. And then, you know, we had a stop hunt above. Managed to get into two positions as well on that pullback. So the first position ended up making some profit on that. And then the final profit on this was um, was uh, was here. So nice trade on the Swiss yen. Um, New Zealand yen, again, an update on this. Uh, I was aiming again to kind of go down to original profit target was was down here, but um, and maybe on second thoughts, I probably should have maybe just um, held on a little longer, but uh, decent profits on this as well. Uh, again, a bit of a reversal um, uh, uh, technical 
signal around here. Uh, there was some definitely some demand in around here. So um, I definitely want to take some profits rather than wait for prices to can maybe continue, maybe go and doing something like this before maybe heading to the downside, right? So um, I was in some decent profits, so ended up taking the rest of my profits off. So I'm out of that. So if we do get a bit more of a pullback on this trade, then I will look for a, uh, a move to the downside. Uh, and look for a pullback and then on the um the yen the nikkei 225 uh my original entry was actually around here right i trailed my stop uh to around just above this swing here and then managed to get kind of stopped out but the uh, the overall risk reward was um was actually quite decent so i can't be asked to think but you can watch the uh, previous videos uh, previous last week and the week before was videos and you'll see basically where my entry was where my stop was stop loss was and so um yeah i think it ended up being maybe like something like a three or four to one or something like that um in and around this um as my uh stop got um got trailed and stopped out so uh, yeah, really nice trades and uh, some new trades, right? So new trades this week, uh, re-entered on um, silver. So again, last week I ended up getting stopped out on a trailing stop around here as prices did pull back. Um, the overall trade was a profitable trade, but the second position ended up being um, uh, being stopped out for a very small uh, loss. So uh, managed to get back in. Uh, on this so nothing's really changed a lot of traders would be scared out of this trade because um, of price action right but ultimately it's not about price action it's about where the fundamentals are, um, are likely to go so entered on silver euro again um, thinking that the euro were going to gonna end up cutting rates and um, again, maybe a little bit of risk off sentiment potentially in the market so ended up uh, entering here stop loss there um and i took profits in fact at the at the highs now on friday uh it was yeah it was it was friday around um friday late um i figured that the us um the federal reserve were looking to cut by 25 basis points and maybe that this was probably the limit of the move although yes prices had kind of touched here once twice three times four times um uh, I figured that, you know, with this move, when you get a parabolic move like that, typically that's not really sustainable. So I took profits off at these uh, at these highs with the expectation that prices may look to pull back a bit before going higher. But then there was a, obviously a change in uh, the expectation um, of the um, the amount of cuts that the Federal Reserve may deliver to 50 basis points. So the rumor came out and then prices obviously shot up. So, yep, I could have held on for a bit longer, but ultimately um, this ended up being um, a nice trade. Uh, the two other trades that I am in and I am uh, still holding for now um, is the Aussie Swiss. So the Aussie Swiss um, from last week, or actually from Monday. So last week's trade, again, um, I was in this around here. Uh, ended up being stopped out uh, when prices, you know, came down on the uh, on the Friday, and I said I was going to get back in. So I ended up getting back in on the Monday uh, up here and entered, managed to enter into four positions. So uh, the original entry, the market entry, was there, and then at here, here, and right at these lows, uh, prices pulled back. So ended up being a bit of a stop hunt. My stop loss was at the 55.93, so nearly got stopped out, not quite. Um, but then as prices moved to the upside, what was nice was that I could then uh, start to take some profit off. So as prices moved to the up uh, to the upside, um, I managed to take a one to one position off at the at the lowest market order. So this one here, the buy order. And then the second one managed to take some profit off there as well at a one to one. So now I'm in two positions, right? So now I'm in two positions. And um, what we saw on Wednesday was basically price sell off again. Now I re entered 
right here um many of the traders um actually all of the traders in the uh private discord group would know exactly why i entered here so there was a nice entry so entered entered here again with the expectation that um i may prices may pull back a bit more right um and try and get into several positions but i only managed to get in on one position because price didn't quite pull back enough to trigger me into um you know further positions right so if i zoom in a bit more you can see where prices didn't quite pull back to enter me into second and a third position so um only managed to get in on one position right and then took a one-to-one -one on that one as prices went to the upside but i'm sorry i'm still in the two positions from the previous trade and so that for me uh is is all right so i've won three trades on this whole move and I'm still in uh, two trades. Um, so I'm looking for this to kind of move to the upside um, and hopefully, um, you know, some good risk rewards. Uh, and uh, the Australian dollar, I think they should, um, uh, the Australian dollar should uh, appreciate over the Swiss franc. Also as well, the Swiss National Bank are looking to potentially cut rates the following week or towards the end of September. And there are rumors that they could uh, actually do a bigger cut right so a 50 basis point cut so if they do then i think this really should uh shoot up and hopefully uh, go towards further towards these highs rather than these highs so that's where i am uh with the uh aussie swiss and finally the swiss i'm sorry the pound uh, Swiss. So um, this was a pair I was looking for, obviously buying the pound over the Swiss franc and managed to get in on uh, right here. Again, the uh, I was talking about this actually in the, in the group call um, saying that um, um, I was getting into this uh, trade after our group call on the Wednesday and managed to get in and it hit a one to one trade on here. So what I've done is I've taken, because I'm only in one position, I've taken uh, some profit off the table. I think I've done about 50%, right? So now it's a break-even trade. So I can't lose, and now I'm going to start to trail my stop higher um, once we start to make higher highs, or if we make higher highs, higher lows. If prices come all the way back down and stop me out, then fine. I wouldn't have lost anything. But if we, um, you know, if, if uh, there are, if the Bank of England do end up holding rates, right and the swiss franc end up cutting rates then i should or we should see prices move to the upside so that's really what i'm looking for and if we prices pull back and we get another entry down here i will definitely look to enter re-enter into this again so uh that's really uh it for this week and again just a quick reminder just in case you missed it the uh, Trading 180 Discord group enrollment opens uh, September the 30th. So uh, if you've missed uh, on previous chances, I've got quite a few emails saying that they missed the last um, uh, enrollment. So if you missed the last one and you really want to get involved in this one, we will be op only open for a limited time. Many of you know that we typically only open for maybe about a week and then that's it. It might be the last one this year. I haven't quite decided, um, but... Um, yeah, if you do want to get involved uh, with the group and a bunch of great traders and lots of great information and uh, strategies and fundamental analysis, then, um, you know, just uh, join on the 30th of September. Uh, wish you all the best. Hope you have a great trading week and take care.